Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to a couple of Switch. Today, you might notice that it's not Heike talking, it's me, Aaron, from Stockholm, and I'm actually doing the interview this time. So, what's up Heike, what did you do? Uh, it's a very lovely Sunday, uh, and uh, we both came top 32 at the European Regionals. Sure did. Woo! Let's go! It's the best results we've done since BT6 when we both came top 10. You came top 8, I think, and I right. came top 10. Yeah, I came 7th and you came, you came 10th. Yeah. We both. And this time I came 22 and you came 26. So yeah. just like last time, we're gonna do a double deck profile. Me going first with my deck. What did you play today, Heike? I played Cross Hearts, which may come as a surprise considering my channel uh, is by now really famous for playing the Shadmon at the Digimon Finals in Germany. The crazy thing is that after it came second place down in uh, Stockholm at the BT12 pre-release, I really didn't think I would join the, the regionals I was playing into, but I, I was so tired after that whole trip, so I almost didn't do it. But, but my that handsome bastard wrote to you the night before, didn't he? Yeah, like uh, late that night, you wrote to me. Come on, just do it, and I did it. Like I didn't, it didn't actually take that much convincing. And boom, here we are. We did it. Cross heart, top 32, 22 even. My best result since BT6 Bean Star. I feel incredible, amazing. Yeah, boy. So wanna get into the list? Yeah, of course I do. So, starting out with the eggs, we played the Pikmon, um, not much explanation needed, it's the card you play together with the cross heart, because every cross heart can digivolve on it, and you draw one when attacking with any cross heart, it's good. Can never go wrong with card draw. And then we jump right into the best level 3 in the deck, and probably one of the best level 3s in the entire game. Shoutmon on play, you reveal, you take some cards, he has save, and most importantly, he gives all of your Digi Crossing Digimons Rush, which is what actually makes the deck really work, since that's what makes you be able to hit your opponent out of nowhere. It's like what makes Crossheart pretty annoying for some people. It's like it's a hybrid, but from the hand, strangely enough, and it costs less. Taking the same role as hybrids did, like back in BT7, BT8, just this deck that can just continuously do damage, you can't interact with it. Exactly. Okay. Moving sure. on, we play three copies of the Starmon. Not much to say here. I'm gonna, like, this may look odd in the comparison to the rest of the list, so we'll just move on to the very lovely, the good boy, Sparamon. The big, big, lovely little boy. Alt art. Oh yeah, amazing, incredible alt art. He is. T he says he's 2,000 DP, but like that's not even true. He gains 3,000 DP as long as you have another cross heart on field, which means another Digimon or a Tamer. So it becomes 5k, meaning that you can swing. Um, yeah. And he has like a very big chance of actually surviving in this meta. Can uh, with the drive. Right? Oh so yeah. Because if you start the turn, like you evolve on the Sparrow here, you would play a Tamer, you promote the swing. If he survives, a lot of like level 4s, if you can choke them, a lot of level 4s cannot kill the Sparrowmon. Like, yeah. uh, their DP is often not enough in this meta. So, good boy, did amazing work. And yes, sir, two copies of Ignitemon and one off copy of Shoutmon Star Sword. The Ignitemon should probably just you know, tell you immediately that this is the Mervamon crossheart list which is very specific, works in a very specific way which I will go over later in the deck profile but Ignitemon, it's good, you gain a memory when you play Digimon with effect which Mervamon does and you can also attack and when you do you can delete another Digimon to uh, delete an unsuspended Digimon of the same level or less and that mattered since I could delete blockers with Ignitemon and then one copy of a Star Sword, which is, in my opinion, really not a rookie that you want to have in racing. Yeah. It's cute. It did a lot of work. It specifically made me win a security control matchup today. 
and uh, I just think me actually 2-0 as security control by doing 10 swings and this being the one that actually maybe be able to do it. I should thank it. It was good to you. Yeah, it, it was good to me, and uh, but uh, it has some cute uses, like it does minus 3000 DP and then it can delete something with 2000 DP if I dig across with both of these, and it has rush at free memory. It's fine, not preferable, but it had its use during the tournament. It, did it ever brick? Oh yeah, you brick quite a lot with this deck, but that seems that the mulligan throw rules, in my opinion, really do motivate me to always mulligan for the the nuts, Be yeah. because the nuts in the with this deck pretty much always set you up to win very, very quickly. Yeah. It's definitely an aggro deck. Oh speak. yeah, this is just unga bonga, I swing, you die type of deck. Either you win in 20 minutes or you lose in 20 minutes. And I did have several matches today where I won in 20 minutes. That's nice. That's really nice. So you can just chill for the rest of the tournament. But uh, the most... Uh, <laughs> we both finished our matches in 20 minutes the last round where we, where we realized, oh shit, we're actually getting top 32. And we finished yeah. both so fast and we just screamed at each other. <laughs> yeah, moving on to the level 4s, we have a play set of the Ballistamon. Opponent's turn, if you have a cross heart on the field, he gains blocker. He also gives Shoutamon inheritable piercing. Amazing because the Sejiro can play him out for free and since Sejiro reacts when you play a cross heart you can tap him to gain a memory meaning that if you play the Sejiro you play him you tap it you play out the level 4 for 2 cost which is yep. disgusting also works in the security mm. and same goes for the Derulamon you can play him out for free with the Akari you do minus 3000 DP to anything on board until the end of your opponent's turn. So not only is Drulamon the master floodgate killer in any scenario, it can also set up that you can do minus DP to something and then you can kill it by battle or by other effects. I've noticed this in general, it's very hard to floodgate this thing. Because you just have so many ways to kill them. Oh yeah, like the Derulu. If... Or Derulu, all of that stuff, right? Because if you, if I know you're gonna floodgate me, I will always save the Derulu and the Akari on hand so I can play it out. Yeah. And that just puts you in a rough situation, because then, pretty much, the only thing that happened is that you tried to floodgate me, but I just responded by deleting it, I have a thing on board now. And so, yeah. and it didn't punish me at all. I just, I just continue on with my game plan. And your opponent spent a turn, like basically delaying their game plan in order to floodgate you, and you just said no. So you gained this such an amazing amount of tempo, right? Yeah, because the, like the only, the only floodgate that this deck really has a problem with is the Pommu, since that makes you not be able to play the Tamer to play it out for free. But like decks that play like the Psychmon, Solar, and Shikuri. Like, they always pretty much have to spend free memory to hard play it on the field. Because in their opinion, if they do that, they they will stop me in their head. But like, mm -hmm. every single time today, where I where that happened, I just played the Akari, played out the Rulemon, killed it, and they just wasted the turn. I got out the Tamer, I got out the level 4, and I just continued to smack them to death. Yeah. Amazing. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, disgusting. <laughs> so moving on to our... Pretty much the the heart of the deck, the cross heart of the deck. Uh, four copies of X3 and one copy of the boy, the one of cross four. So these are the dudes that uh, you dig across together with all of these boys. So with a full lo fully loaded cross three with the shout the rule and the ballista cost only one memory, and you pretty much all of the time get to look at top three. You draw. Like, mo at most two cards, but mostly like one card since you there's other cards in the deck. Then he gains rush because of the Shoutmon, and then you swing. He dies, you reload, you can play out another swing, so forth, so forth. And obviously, the dude that got restricted and should stay restricted, the cross four. 
probably it's a little bit of an HPD situation. Maybe, maybe it should be banned. No, no, it, I don't think as a one-off it really isn't that effective. Like in combination with the Mervamon, it's pretty good playing it out with the Mervamon and drawing two. That's really good. But just having it as a one-off is really not that bad. The problem with the older version was that you played cross four, you drew two, you swung, you drew one, it survived, you popped it. Uh, Restand the Taiki, you played out another one, draw two, you swing, you draw one. So you could infinitely just draw the cards to get into all of your X-Force to hit for game. And yeah. just having the one-off really isn't that good. Because, yeah, okay, of course, it's still an amazing card, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it, the combination of the four copies is just too much. Yeah, I mean... I don't know if I truly agree, but that's a topic for another time. Moving on to the boss monster of the deck, we play three copies of Mervamon. Talking about disgusting, here's truly disgusting. She's yeah. uh, just a... Uh, she's a card. She's the most Digimon card of all time. <laughs> so <laughs> you uh, you do... you can dig across not only from hand you can or tamers you can actually dig across from the trash with her meaning that you can pick under the ignite mon so she will cost eight but you'll gain a memory then you can revive two cross hearts from the trash onto the field that's level four or less me and they gain all rush and blocker meaning and that if cross screen, cross four? yeah so you can get back these you draw a million cards you can be get back two of these they doing minus 6,000, then the Merva can hit over something. I've done that multiple times. It feels amazing. And it's just set up these disgusting board states where you, instead of like doing like what I like I said previously, like a hybrid from hand, it's, the, it's like it's three hybrids from hand at once. Yeah. Non-interactable. They, they all gain rush and blocker, right? Every yeah. cross. Yeah, so they're both defensive and offensive. You just, if you get it out, you kill your opponent pretty much. And how we do that, I will go through in a moment. Let's go through the tamers first. I play a playset of Taiki, a playset of Senjiro, and a playset of Akari. These are. I do not. No, uh... No, no triple tamer. What we want to look for the most in this deck is that we want as many tamers that play out these Digimon for free from security or from the hand. And we also specifically want the Taiki over the triple tamer because the, the white one puts under a card, then you draw one again and one memory. Sure, that's good, but the Taiki digs. You want to dig as quickly as possible for all of these pieces. It's better to play the Taiki in this version, while the white one is much better for the Cross 7 version. And also the Senjiro and Akari are really fucking strong as well, right? They're like... <sighs> yeah, when you play a Cross Heart you gain a memory when you tap it, and this, if you play a Cross Heart you can tap it to draw a card. There was a game where I had four Senjiros on the field, meaning that I could play the Mervamon, I was at three, I could play the Mervamon and leave my opponent at one with four Digimons on field that had a blocker. That felt, that's really strong and really disgusting. And the current tenure really like exemplifies what I think a good deck usually has, which is like engine cards that are good in security, that are frankly security bombs. Yeah, they are security bombs that stick around as well, because uh, the, the way this deck really wants to go is that you want to get all of these tamers out. The more tamers you have on the field, the more lethal you become. Just because everything becomes cheaper and you start drawing more cards. And the reason we want to draw more cards is our two play sets of Blinding Ray and Gravity Crutch. That pretty much does the same thing. We use them and we gain two memory with different uh, negative outcomes. But the but point... We don't care about them because we're killing them the turn we do it, right? Exactly. So, yeah, like the Merva cost 8, you gain a memory, go to 7. People think, ah, that's fine, that passes turn. Well, if we go up to 10 memory, then it doesn't matter, then we just kill them immediately. Because the, if our opponent, since our game plan is just evolve rook, on rookie, swing, get out a cross free, swing, or your like, tamer putting out one of these, swing. Like we just swing forward, hoping for the best. It's, it's complete aggro, this deck. Yeah, Unga Bunga, right? Yeah, Unga Bunga, Agro, Agro, Booms, 
straightforward hit. And we finish up with the Mervamon. When the opponent is at 3 2 security, we just play the Mervamon. Everything gains rush. We just kill them immediately. There was multiple people today that I did that to. Just it seemed fine. Then Merva, free attacks, they lose. Also, what's broken about Merva is like if it sticks, you can just hard play a bunch of stuff. They can also swing directly, right? Oh, yeah. Like you don't even need the Shoutmon and this combination anymore. If you have four Sanjiros, I can play Starmon, gain a memory, and then just swing. Yeah. Really, really good. And I see you got the two Crimson Blazes there. Are those the last cards? Yeah, the Swedish community really suggested me to play this because it's good against the Mirror and the Belsa. Sadly, it I only met one Mirror today and zero Belsamons, which was very odd considering that the Americans had a big representation of the Belsamon and the Crossheart. But we, I had some very odd matches. I had some really bad matches where, like, where I mean the matchups were very unfavored for me. Like, uh, we're talking about two ultimate machines with the Tamer destruction, two Black War Greymons, and uh, yeah, and absolutely, and security control as well that specifically played the Venusmon and Dinosmon to negate the Turbo Aggro. So but it, you still pulled through. Yeah, I still pulled through. Top 22. We got there, baby, with cross hearts. So I'm noticing you don't play about... You don't play any X5s. Uh, do you want to tell us why? Well, in the beginning, the Crimson Blaze was a cross 5, but people s said, like, do you really play it that much? Because one uh, Psycho Feather said in my version, I... Ne pretty much in 30 games, never played the cross 5. And I thought about that. Like, in my opinion, sure, I think the cross 5 is really good. He costs 0 with all of the materials we have here. And he does 2 checks, draws a card, reboot blocker. It's really good. But, um, yeah, like, thinking about it, the way I always won was either with the cross 3, cross 4, and the Merva combo. But never the cross 5, because I think the cross 5 is a more of a defensive card. Mm. Like, it takes a lot of materials to get him out, sure he's free, but he's not a game-ender. Like, having multiple bodies and then smashing is just better than a big body, because a lot of times the cross 5 just died in the security, then I lose a bunch of materials and I don't have game. But I do like the cross 5, and uh, in the beginning as well, I played two Defex in my version, since there's a lot of Armor Rush and Dark Nightmon and Security Control, so the Defex really solves a lot of issues sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I understand uh, people's argument for not playing that deck, it's not really, it's awful against Belsemon, it doesn't do anything. And, but it's really good in the mirror, sometimes, depending on how it goes for them. But uh, this worked out. I Though, yeah, it worked. It worked. I came top 22. So, I really can't complain. It apparently, this is a, is a, it's a good list for the format that is it's currently right now in BT11. About that, would there be anything you would change? Like, Future. during the tournament, I really missed the cross 5, in my opinion. I missed the defects, and I thought that maybe having two playsets of this was a bit unnecessary. Maybe changing another Gravity Crush for another Crimson or defects would have been good. Or another cross heart of any kind. But. Like, hmm? I'm thinking, like, maybe. How do you feel about one Crimson, one Defex, one Shout? It uh... sounds interesting. Well, think talking about that though, actually, is that a lot of problem with this deck is that since you have so many card searches, searches with the Taki cross 3, cross 4, yeah. you will rotate through everything, so you will miss those cards if they are one offs. I mean,. To be fair then, that you did the same thing with Melga, that because you rotated so much you got it up eventually at the end. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Maybe it's actually worth trying out. 
But my next and goal is turning my next goal is turning this deck is into cross seven and be less toxic. <laughs> <laughs> but for this time I wanted to be toxic because I really I I really didn't know what to play today, so I just took this and just went with it and it went well for some reason. So yeah. Uh, not for some reason, you probably played great, right? Yeah. Hey, you did the same. You t you were going to play something else. You took the bloom and you did amazing. So we both did the right thing, apparently. Apparently. Uh, got any shout-outs you want to do, or some last stuff you want to say about that? I'm gonna shout-out uh, Aaron for being an amazing little lad. That play is just incredible. I want to thank him for the the playtesting and all of the great works he does in the server, being a moderator and being a pillar of uh, like a, like what every other pe person in the community should be, in my opinion. Ah, continue, continue. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank everyone else at the Swedish in the Swedish community for supporting me, for being lovely people, supporting uh, the the like playing together, talking together, playtesting together. Just uh, I think that Sweden has a very lovely, strong community, and we care a lot about each other. And uh, we're. What I actually like about the server and when we we meet up and play like pre-releases and big tournaments together, it feels like everyone is friends, everyone knows each other, everyone knows each other's names, and I feel that's lovely. Yeah, uh, you're pulling my heartstrings here. This is such uh, a great message. Well, because uh, it, all of this is super important to me. Like this, you know, probably how much work I put into this. Of course, man. You've been the pillar of the community for a long while now, I think. So, I just want to thank everyone that participated, that talked, that playtested, that played with us. And I think that we should... It's We have an amazing community and I want us to keep doing this together as a team. I hope so as well, man. Well, it's been lovely interviewing you. And lovely being allowed to host this interview. <laughs> it's my pleasure. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like and a subscribe. Uh, tune in for the next video where I will be interviewing Aaron. Aaron for his Bloom Lord decklist, where, which he came top 32 with, which will probably come out tomorrow after this video is posted. Have a great night now. Bye bye. Don't forget to ring the bell button.